I want to share with you today um, from the Word, and um, the title is going to be The Story of Wolves and Lambs. So, who knows, maybe this has something to do with it. If you do have your Bible, if you don't, I'm going to read it anyway, but if you do have your Bible, uh, let's look at Luke chapter 10 and verse uh, 3. <clears throat> Luke 10, 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. And the first thing to notice there is Jesus is saying to go your ways, meaning there's many different ways. We're all going to be going in different ways in ministry and in our life and all these things. But he makes one thing clear. One, there's, there's all these many ways but there's one way that you're being sent. Go your ways, behold, I send you as lambs. And that's what the Lord's doing, this, that he's sending us as, not just as Christians, but he's sending us as lambs. And, uh, and that means that he's sending us in his spirit, in his nature, of his, his way of selflessness, his way of sacrifice, his way that doesn't live for himself, but lives for God and others. And... Um, so it's, it's pretty powerful, but then the rest of it says, I send you as lambs among wolves, and that's, that's what we'll talk about. But as, as you see, the, the immediate theme is um, wolves and lambs. So uh, similar scriptures found over in Matthew 10, and, uh, but it adds one extra point here. Again, he says, I send you forth. But he does so in the midst of wolves. The wording is, is very specific, in the midst of wolves. In the midst of wolves. And so um, he's, we, get, we get the understanding that he, is, he definitely is sending us. He definitely has something on his heart. But the many ways is not the important thing. It is that each of us, in the way that we go, uh, in, the, in the ministry way that we go, that we go as a lamb. We go in his spirit and we go in his nature. And um, <clears throat> usually when we think about being sent, we think about being sent uh, to our ministry, to what's important to us. Um, but, but there's something more important than our ministry and what's important to us, and that is his spirit. And that's the overriding thing that he has in this. So he's not just sending us as Christians. He's not just sending us as ministers, <clears throat> but as uh, ministers of his nature in all things. Um, and also in this uh, scripture in Matthew 10, it says, uh, In the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Um, and I, I thought about the word harmless because Jesus is talking about doves or the dove. And we know the Holy Spirit came upon him as a dove. And, and usually when we think of the dove, one of the first things comes to our mind is um, his wings. But the first thing that comes to Jesus' mind is his harmlessness. That's what he thinks about because he's known the dove, he's known the Holy Spirit from eternity past. And this is how he, he portrays him. Um, so, um, so where are we sent? We're, sent? we're sent in the midst of wolves. That's what it says. And that means that we are intentionally sent there. Okay. Uh, most people would think, well, he, was, he would send us away from wolves. He would not want us to be around wolves. But... I mean, think about it. If, if, he if that's what he really wanted, if that was the main thing, then when we got saved, he would have taken all of his lambs home to be with him, all of that home uh, because we're all saved and take us out of the world that has wolves in it. But you see, just because we're saved doesn't mean that that nature of the lamb is formed in us. And that's his whole heart. That's what he's intentionally doing and sending us there. And, of course, again, most would want to go to a happy place. You know, oh, no, there's wolves. I just want to go to a happy place. <laughs> and it's, that's, he has a plan. So we want to look at some of the scriptures that has to do with that plan. 
<clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, just uh, three chapters back from where we were just looking. Matthew 7, beginning with verse 15. <coughs> Excuse me again. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. <clears throat> so, um, the first thing that he mentions is, uh, in that verse, is in the midst of wolves, which we saw. We understand now that he's going to send his lambs in the midst of in the midst of wolves. And, um, and what are these wolves that he's talking about? He says, uh, I kind of worded it like this. I just put in parentheses the word prophets and read it this way. Beware of false, which come to you in sheep's clothing. Beware of false. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you name it. Doesn't matter if it's a prophet or this or that or whatever. It's false. It's not the lamb. But <clears throat> notice that it comes in those clothes, the sheep's clothing. And so they appear. When they appear, they appear like lambs. They appear in, in sheep's clothing. And so you could even say that they are, they are brothers and sisters, maybe you know ministers, maybe this and that. But they, their appearance is like a lamb. And you know we could go into the book of Revelation and Daniel and, uh, and really examine that, that area right there. <clears throat> um, so who are they? Who, who are they then? Well, part of the thing is maybe we need to consider it could be us. It could be us. We could be wolves in sheep's clothing and not even know it. Remember the rest of what it was saying that the, <clears throat> you'll know them by their fruits, and then he starts talking about thorns and thistles and and um, uh, corrupt uh, fruit, uh, evil fruit, and <clears throat> he gets into all of that. Um, so, uh, so though we might assume that we're not a wolf, Jesus is saying these things and giving us the scriptures to say, uh, hey, maybe we are, but there's good news at the end of this, so don't freak out too much. <laughs> um, but we assume that, but, and here's the real, here's the real question. Do we put on sheep's clothing? That's the question. Are we putting on sheep's clothing? And it's, uh, uh, it is, uh, it's just being put on. It's not, it's not him inside. We're not putting the lamb in. We're putting him on. We get into, we go to church and we put him on. We go, we get in uh, certain situations where we want to look spiritual and we put him on like sheep's clothing, like lamb's clothing. But the whole point is in that scripture is that uh, what is on the inside? What is the, what is the nature? Um, and so uh, I've, I wrote down lamb's clothing is easy to put on. It's easy to put on. Anybody can put on lamb's clothing for an hour or two in church or under a certain spiritual setting. But putting on the lamb is not easy. It requires us to deny ourselves. And in truth, it requires us to love Jesus, the Lamb of God, more than we love ourselves. It requires there to want a transfer of nature, a transfer of attitudes, a transfer uh, from us, and to love Jesus with all of our heart, soul, and strength. <clears throat> so, um, uh, I wrote this, how do we know if we or someone in our midst are wolves? And Jesus said, inwardly, inwardly, they are ra 
ravening wolves inwardly it's a situation when it comes to the Lord it's a situation of what's inward not what we're putting on the outside and I think we all can maybe I mean if we would be honest with ourselves <clears throat> we you know we could look at certain times and certain things and and see this beast this wolf come out of us these teeth show up and and maybe attack somebody or whatever in whatever form that it comes and it and we should examine and say am i in the in the most spiritual settings putting on sheep's clothing but it's not really the lamb and am am i in the worst crisis showing what's inwardly the situation with me and jesus said check what's inward check what's inward if you want to if you want to to come to a true change and he said you'll know them by their fruit so of course this is not we're, I don't think we're talking about fruit when it's convenient now, because <laughs> I don't think that's fruit. That's the same as putting on sheepskins. Um, that's um, appearing, and, that, and that's the thing that it says. They appear as sheep, but they're not. <clears throat> so uh, in Acts chapter 20, um, I'll read verse tw starting with verse 29. <clears throat> This is Paul speaking after he knows that he's, he's going to move on and maybe even die. Uh, and he's speaking to the church uh, at Ephesus, if I remember correctly. For I know this, so this is something he knows. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Here we are, wolves and, and lambs. Again, it's, you see how this is a... We're going to a lot of different places in the Bible, and this is a theme. Uh, uh, grievous wolves entering in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, and speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. So this is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal to Jesus who's saying, you know, who's making this contrast. It's a big deal to Paul because he sees it and he sees it coming three years in advance. And he's, he's warning and praying with tears and trying to help them to understand that it's not the ministry that you do, it's the spirit you do it in. It's not the ministry and the, or, the, or the way that you look when, when every, all eyes are on you, but is there a beast in there? Is there a wolf in there? <clears throat> or behind someone's back? We're sweet to them in front of them, but behind their back we, ha we have all these, these uh, beastly wolf things to say uh, about them. So he said, grievous wolves will enter in and how do we how do we know he knows this well he said for for i know this so how does he know this let's see wolves will be wolves you know people say oh well boys will be boys wolves will be wolves that's how he knows it he knows that a wolf is going to be a wolf and it's going to show up that way <clears throat> uh, he knows it because he says they will attack. They will attack what? The lambs, the flock. Um, and they're going to speak perverse things. Now, here's the thing. It's not just that they got a foul mouth. It is that they speak perverse things about others. And here, here's the scripture, what it says about others to draw them away from someone else. So you speak perverse things about them so that you can draw these people away from them and draw them unto yourself. It's exactly what he says. It's, that's so wolf. <laughs> that is so wolf to, to, well, this is mine and this is my ministry and this is my people and this is my, all of it. Just so, so 
the opposite of the Lamb of God. <clears throat> and then he said, um, he says um, uh, that I have been, I mean, if you put it in plain English, he's talking to this church and he says, I've been warning you for the space of three years about what is not the Lamb and what is the Lamb. I talk about it all the time. I share with you all the time. That's what Paul's saying here. Well, let me just read it from a prayer. That by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every, every one, night and day, with tears. So this is space of three years, warning, doing it everyone to everyone, night, day, with tears. This is a huge subject. This is huge to God. It's huge to, to his, his apostle that he's pouring out the word. He's, he is giving some of the purest word that's going to go forth to the ears of people. But at the same time, he's having to warn them all the time, look, there's going, to be, there's going to be people that look like they're lambs and they're not. They're going to put on this lamb that I keep sharing about. But it's only going to be the lamb's clothing. They're not going to put in the nature of that lamb. And so I was deeply moved by these words. And, you know, being a minister myself, knowing how he must have been grieved, knowing I'm, I'm fixing to leave and here they, they're going to come. You know, and then he says, even among yourselves, already there's some that are that are doing that. <clears throat> so, um, uh, verse thirty-one, he says, uh, basically that this is it's already happened. I mean, they're coming, but it's already happened. There's some already. All right. So. <clears throat> um, so I wrote, um, are they already among us? <laughs> um, let's face it, not all of us have, you know, I mean, we're in the process. Amen? We're in the process. We want the Lamb. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not speaking specifically to you guys. I'm just sharing the word. But there's, you know, I mean, there's a way to go for some of us, really, a way that we need to we need to tighten our belts and, and 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 press in more for his nature because Jesus the whole thing was Jesus started this thing with <clears throat> with talking about um, uh, go your ways but I'm I send you as lambs that's what I'm doing don't go if you're not okay well basically go the way of finding and learning the lamb so that you can put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and put him in there and be conformed to that, his spirit and be conformed to his nature. And so um, in Isaiah 11, verse 6, it says this, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. All right, I'm going to use, I'm going to use two verses out of Isaiah. I'm going to use, uh, in two chapters, I'm going to use Isaiah uh, 11 6 the one I just read in relationship to one truth why he would allow us to be among wolves in the midst of wolves and then I'm going to use Isaiah 65 25 and, and some of the verses after that <clears throat> to give a, a another view of why he would do that so <clears throat> Isaiah eleven six again, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Jesus said, I send you in the midst of wolves. Uh, why would he do that? Why are we there? Because it's in that situation. It's not when everybody's a, a, a lamb that you give the op that you really get the opportunity to show forth the, the, the excellencies of his nature. Uh, it's 
it's in the midst of wolves when they're when they're unjust and they're unfair and and they're mean and they're attacking you and they're all this kind of stuff that's when the glory rises that's when the incense is real see we can fake it on some of the littler things but boy when wolves are attacking that's where you find out who who lives who lives who lives and that's where you find out whether Paul weeps or rejoices with the Lord, with the Father that he's getting his son. So he puts us among wolves for, for a test. Not that he's testing us to, to see us to fail, but giving us opportunities that the life and nature of the Lord can come forth, even in the worst situations. All right, and then... Uh, Isaiah 65, 25 <clears throat> says this. It's very similar, but it has uh, an added thing. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Okay, so if the wolves are all laying down, he, the, uh, uh, with verse uh, chapter 11, he's saying, go over there and be in the midst. Well, that's dangerous. Yeah, but I want to see my son. In this one, he's saying they, they're going to feed together. They're going to be eating the same thing. <clears throat> and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, um, and they shall not hurt nor destroy in, in, in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. So here in this one, in Isaiah 65, is the beauty of being in the midst of the lambs and the lions it mentions here. Uh, we're, we're sent there to let them see the Lamb of God, not us, but the Lamb of God in us. And, and it's actually saying, you know, we stay there until the wolves and the lions take on the nature of Jesus, the nature of the Lamb. Just be there because some of them are going to turn. So <clears throat> what does that mean for us? That means it doesn't matter if, there's a, if, the, if we're putting on sheep's clothing, if we're putting on lamb clothing but not, not fully put him in yet, there's still hope for us. There is hope for us. There is the fact that he's going to take those wolves and lions and they're going to be, you know, it doesn't matter what they look like outwardly because inwardly they're laying down with the lamb. Inwardly they're feeding with the lamb. Inwardly they shall not hurt nor destroy anymore. They're lambs. That's glorious. That's the hope. And that's the hope that, that he gives to all of us. So to me, so I'm going to wrap this up. Now. To me, um, it is like, um, okay, if, if, uh, I, if I've been putting on lambskin uh, and trying to look like a lamb to fit in or to whatever, but I know that there's a lot of wolf in me, then I'm going to admit that. I'm going to go say, hey, I need more of the lamb. I need this Jesus. This is the Jesus I want, the one that is beautiful, the one that is selfless. And so I am going to, uh, I'm going to admit it, and I'm going to say, you bet, you know what? I'm not going to hide myself from my own flesh. Absolutely. Yes, Lord, get me. You know, and then <clears throat> once you do that, then you say, OK, let me see the lamb in you. Let me see your spirit. Let me look in the word and see the, the, the fullness of the lamb nature. And let me be changed into that same image from glory to glory so that you know, we know it's the lamb in us that does that. But in this picture, it's trying to show the lamb came into our midst and could have been slaughtered and was actually slaughtered. But in our midst, um, now there are some of us that are laying down with him, that are feeding on what he's eating, that are, that are uh, no longer destroying them. They shall uh, nor hurt. Uh, they shall not hurt nor destroy. He's talking about the lions and the wolves. So that now inwardly they're not rav ravening wolves. They are lamb. That's our goal. That's our heart. That's what we cry out for. That's why we meet more of Jesus, less of me. Praise God.
So if you're going through anything, you're seeing how off you are, don't worry about it. Press into the Lord. Don't focus on the wolf nature. Say, well, let that motivate you. Go, I don't like this, and the Lord doesn't like it, and Paul's crying over it, so I, I want rid of it. And then start looking at that lamb, and pretty soon that, that wolf lays down beside him, and that lion lays down beside him, and they start eating what he's eating, and that spirit comes into them, and they're not, no longer about hurting or destroying but blessing even to their own loss. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for allowing this, uh, this blog to go forward even though it was attacked so much. Lord, there's no, no shame. All of us start out as a wolf. But your spirit, your, your dove, the harmless one is trying to get us to move off of hiding that with, a, with clothing that is a lamb, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So, so we together, we say, yes, Lord. We say, do the work, author and finisher. You're not just the author, but you're the finisher. Do the work and let Christ bring this wolf and this lamb to their knees and to be lowly with that lamb. We love you, Lamb of God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for the harmless dove that is on us now to work this into us. We thank you in Jesus' name.